Welcome to the 2024-25 Daily City Youth Poet Laureate Commencement Event. I'm Victoria Megbilang, Executive Director of the Daily City Public Library Associates, also known as DCPLA, and Program Director for the Daily City Youth Poet Laureate Program. In case you're not familiar with us, DCPLA is like a Friends of the Library, providing funding and advocacy for our Daily City Public Libraries. We're extremely proud to host the Daily City Youth Poet Laureate Program in partnership with the Daily City Public Library and Urban Word, creator of the National Youth Poet Laureate Program. April is National Poetry Month, as well as National Arts, Culture, and Creativity Month, so what better time to celebrate these impressive young artists? At this time, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge a few community members in attendance this evening. Please give a little wave. We have Jocelyn Manalo, Mayor of Daly City. <laughs> Pamela D. Giovanni, Daly City Council member. <laughs> Teresa Proagno, DCPLA Director and Daly City Council member. <laughs> Tom Piccolotti, Daly City Manager, Daly City City Manager. <laughs> Tony Presta, Jefferson Union High School District Superintendent. Austin Warden, Jefferson Union High School District Communications Director. <laughs> Teresa Falpua, Bayshore Elementary School District Board of Trustees and Daly City Planning Commission. <laughs> Chayla Anderson, Director of Daly City Public Library. <laughs> Eileen Casanetto, San Mateo County Poet Laureate Emeritus. Tony Bayoudan, Personnel Board Commissioner and um, Supervisor of Canapa's Office. <laughs> Monica Corday, Poet Laureate of Belmont. <laughs> My apologies if I missed anyone, I'll probably add some more people later. <laughs> So I'd like to thank the judges of the 2024 Daily City Youth Poet Laureate Program, Raquel Espana from Peninsula Book Collaborative, Mara Grimes with the San Mateo County Office of Arts and Culture, Luis Herrera, retired city librarian from San Francisco Public Library, Clayton Ku, DCPLA Vice President, Selena Tirona, Daily City Public Library, and Olivia Veroy, the 2023-24 Daily City Youth Poet Laureate. We invited each of these judges to participate because of their unique perspective and qualifications. Applicants' names, schools, and other identifying information was eliminated from their applications in an effort to keep the judging impartial. Judges used a rubric created by Urban Word with which applicants were scored equally on their civic engagement and their original poetry submissions. When people ask me about the Daily City Youth Poet Laureate, I always stress that it's a pos position, not a prize. Our Youth Poet Laureate is chosen based on their qualifications to act as a representative of the Daily City Public Library Associates and Daily City Youth at events around the city and the county. When we launched our program in October of 2020, it was not only the first Daily City Youth Poet Laureate program, but the first in all of San Mateo County. Our first three Daily City Youth Poets Laureate have gone above and beyond the requirements of their role and have exemplified everything that we are looking for in this prestigious position. And we're proud to announce that 2022-23 Daily City Youth Poet Laureate Chloe Chow was recently awarded the title of California Youth Poet Laureate. We have no doubt that every one of these amazing finalists is qualified to do just as excellent of a job. We can only choose one winner, but even after the competition, all of our finalists will have opportunities to work with established poets in our community to continue to hone their craft and can always apply again as long as they continue to meet the eligibility requirements. We'd like to thank all of our finalists for coming to City Hall this evening to share one or two of their original poems that they submitted for the competition. We will also have the honor of hearing work from 2023-24 Daily City Youth Poet Laureate Olivia Veroy, or 2023-24, I'm sorry, I'm not sure what I said, <laughs> and 2022-23 Daily City Youth Poet Laureate and current California Youth Poet Laureate Chloe Chow. After the performances, Olivia will announce the names of the first runner-up and winner, and then you are all invited to enjoy some cake and coffee. 
We'd like to thank the da City of Daly City for all their support of the Daly City Youth Poet Laureate Program, including providing the $2,500 honorarium, and invite Mayor Jesslyn up to say a few words. Thank you so much, Victoria, for <clears throat> all of the amazing work. I remember when you first brought this program and, um, to the city of Daly City, and it really has blossomed. Um, we get to see our youth in action. So good evening, everyone. I am Mayor Jessica Manalo, and it's truly wonderful to see all the amazing youth that are here this evening. Um, I want to celebrate all the seven finalists for 2024-25 Daily City Youth Poet Laureate. It is such a privilege to host such an amazing event again this year in partnership with our Daily City Public Library Associates. It is truly a gift what our youth has given us to narrate a feeling, a story, a picture, an experience through poetry and writing. To have been selected for the opportunity to be chosen as this year's Youth Poet Laureate means that you are a very talented teen poets who work and demonstrate artistic excellence, civic engagement, and leadership. To each and every one of you, remember to continue to thrive and excel. Your futures are bright. Um, you know, I'm so proud to have grown up here in the city of Daly City. You know, I went to Woodrow Wilson Elementary, Ben Franklin, and Jefferson High School. And what um, our district and our students, all those that come from uh, these uh, schools and institutions, I'm always inspired. It's really these events with youth and young people, with each and every one of you, they're the highlights of my day. So this morning, I met with um, some students from Ben Franklin, um, you know, uh, with the special needs class. And this evening, I get to hear from amazing poets. Um, and so people ask me very often, um, you know, how do you, know, do you like your job? What do you do? What's the most rewarding? And one of the most rewarding, um, I would say, opportunities I get to have is to see the youth and young people and to talk to the youth and young people. Because many say that our youth are our future, but I also wanna say our youth are our leaders today. Um, and I see that and I'm very much um, inspired by each and every one of you. I look forward to hearing all of your poems and poetry. Um, and we know that Daly City has such a wonderful um, future, not only ahead, but now, with l student leaders like yourself. Um, and so uh, without further ado, I know we're going to move on with our program. Um, but congratulations to everyone this evening. I just want to add a couple of people who just came in. Um, Mara Grimes from the San Mateo County Office of Arts and Culture and Lisa Rosenberg, San Mateo County Poet Laureate Emeritus. Thank you both for coming. So now let's hear from our students. First up, we have Kaylee Chu, age 13. She attends, Cal, uh, sorry, Fernando Rivera Immediate School. Uh, sorry. <laughs> intermediate school, where she is editor-in-chief of the school newspaper. Oh, oh no, <laughs> sorry. It's like a oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, could I give a quick shout out to uh, one of the, one of the people at FRS real quick? So, um, I would like to thank Ms. Zerner, who was one of the people who introduced me to this program and allowed me to become the writer I am today. So thank you to Ms. Zerner, the librarian at FRS. And here is my poem, Daylight's Cadence. 
When another dawn-driven sun rises from its slumber at the summit of the sky, the robin's calling chirps into birdsong as he perches on the tree's arms. The tree sings of a different tale to ignite the leaf-hung forest. His brothers near the willow sit over rampant hills near the presence of the marble horizon. His vast and ever-climbing roots promise to stay grounded in soil, but it has no tree to keep the promise with. When morning dew drips down into rain, it's a war zone to attain the water. The rain that runs like a river through the veins has been devoured by the trees, looking down with disdain, but the second has come. The second war of vain arrives with a blade. The heart of the forest fell sour in the center, but the center cannot hold a tree's soul. His soul rests in the hands of the man who wields the blade. His soul, in which the winds were the last things he felt, as the roots that promise to keep him grounded become unhinged at the throat, screaming at the blade, dividing roots and trunk, soon carried away by truck. The sun sleeps after the second war. Daylight's cadence of the warring nature give the roots one moment to sing out his soul. When another dawn-driven sun rises from its slumber at the summit of the sky, the robin's calling chirps into birdsong as he perches on the tree stump. The tree's roots sing one last tale to ignite the leaf-hung forest. Thank you so much, Kaylee. That was really amazing. And thank you for calling out uh, your librarian. I know Ms. Zerner, and she's awesome. I really appreciate the support she's given our program. So next, we will hear from Elizabeth Wong, age 16, who is a student at El Camino High School. Elizabeth is a South San Francisco youth, youth poet, uh, sorry, I'm having so much trouble speaking, <laughs> South San Francisco Youth Poet Laureate, I mean, Youth Poet in Resident Emeritus. Uh, oh, hi. Um, I wanted to also like to thank my creative writing teacher before I start, Mr. Padilla, because he really encouraged me to start writing poetry, and he's the reason I'm here. So my poem is called The Perfect Pot. Homogenous, together as one, a melting pot of our lives to culminate as one flavor, our lives served on a platter. A platter made for your pleasure, to inspect each and every exotic ingredient, whatever you like Sorry. Whatever you don't like is tossed aside, picked apart until we are perfect for the pot. If you were to take in all of our flavor, you would surely throw it up. For when our intense love and existence is whole, we are disgusting to you, and we must be stripped away in your eyes. You feast upon our lies and flesh while you wipe your hands clean of the blood you spilled to bring you this meal. All of our cries and deaths from a land far away go unheard. Our cultures are a delicacy you steal. We are the base of your sickening stew, boiled down until we are nothing but the best for you. The liquid is murky and dark as you fill our bowls. We choke down on this horrendous concoction. The taste is degrading to all of us who, live, who have lived before. You lie and tell us that the soup is wonderful, that its flavor is unmatched and perfect. Salty and oversaturated with terrible taste, no longer distinguishable from the other, from the beauty of the Cheung Som to the grace of Folklorico. You expect gratitude and praise from us as spoons are shoved into our mouths. With your empty smile, you demand our complacency. To be complicit in your crimes and to relish in our soup. You have taken away our personal tastes, mixed together in a bastardizing way, stripped of everything we call ours, all for the perfect pot. Very impressive. You guys are blowing me away already. Next, we have Stephanie de Guzman, age 16, from Jefferson High School. Stephanie is bilingual and works as an academic tutor for other students. Good evening, everyone. I am pleased to present my poem, Sun and Moon. Okay. Sun and Moon. Up in the sky, the sun and moon collide. During the day, the sun shines. In the night, the moon is bright. Why are you so big and bright? Asks the moon. The sun replies, so that I can light up the day and brighten the sky. I can do that too, says the moon. You, with your small figure and pale complexion, 
I don't think that will happen anytime soon. Don't be sad, the sun comforts the moon. You're also in the sky during the day, but you're hidden like treasure wanting to be found. You're like a diamond shining underneath the sky. The moon feels comforted, its mood skyrocketed. I have realized my importance during the night, the moon says. My light guides people in the dark. In the night, I'm really needed. Thank you, sun, for comforting me. You helped me realize what I can be. You are a star, a shining light. Thank you for being big and bright. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Next, we have Julian Ozaita, aged 16 and a student at St. Ignatius College Preparatory. Julian was a previous Daily City Youth Poet Laureate finalist and volunteers with SF Marin Food Bank Tutors and is co-president of Music for Others. Hello, my name is Julian Ozaida, and my poem is entitled, Land of Vital Blood. I am a child of the Americas, you continent of one or two or all of us. You birthed me, birthed miracles. You raised me in undivided chorus. Across an ocean, there is a country with my face and soil with my roots, and now I wander among wisps of vernacular on your frontier. Across an ocean, there is a country with my name and soil with its clues as to why and how and what happened so I can stand here. But here, east and west are nowhere and everywhere in the locution and location of your north and south. No matter the, dir the direction, you have a singular past to bear one of stolen land and broken chains and which words travel from my mouth. And I'm glad to breathe in your world, new but oh so old, to have the wild beat of a heart and the warm skin of the islands, to have color and see it reflected back in a thousand shades, broadening and bold, to have a life in this moment and hear the words, no borders, just horizons. I was your responsibility, and now you are mine. You fountain, you stone, you mountain, you home. You and I, we are, we are culture and language, history and time. I have named you, and behold, I have written you into poem. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julian. So now we're going to take a little break from the poetry to hear from DCPLA President Monica DeVincenzi. Thanks, Victoria. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for this amazing talent. Thank you to the families for supporting them in their efforts. Um, we're very happy. Ooh, that was loud. Um, we're very happy to be here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Daly City Public Library Associates <laughs> has been around since 2011, and we've given over 350,000 or more, maybe a little bit more now, uh, to the libraries in Daly City, uh, supporting new books, technology, refurbishing the libraries, maintaining facilities, and so much more. That so much more includes things like tonight, doing the Youth Poet Laureate contest. Uh, we also have the Art and Lit Fest, uh, which will be happening, um, it's, it's the third year this year, in November, November 2nd, at the Ceremony Center. And it gives us a chance to feature local artists, um, encourage the cultural uh, rise of Daly City's art community. So we really hope that you take some time to learn more about our organization. Visit us at dcpla.org. Uh, become a member. It only costs $20, but it, it helps to support these amazing, amazing students that you see before you. So thank you again. Thank you, Monica. So we will now hear from Lauren Valencia, age 13, and a student at Our Lady of Mercy School. Lauren enjoys playing various instruments and performing in musical theater. Hi everyone, um, I, I'm gonna be reading two poems. The first one is called Slipping. 
slipping. Something inside me is slipping. Like dark streaks of rain, a puddle forms by my feet, a puddle full of me. The puddle shows me a reflection. When I look into it, I can see it so clearly, all the good in me. The second one is called Eyes Remember. My eyes try to align to someone worth their time, their joy, their pain, their longing feather, gaze at those whose love I tether. I hold them close, my eyes remember. So when my mind is old and brittle, I hope my eyes relive the little gaze they met so long ago, a gaze that makes them feel at home. Thank you, Lauren. Next is Maxwell Espinola, age 17 and a student at Summit Shasta. He is an ex has an extensive resume of civic engagement experience, including working on political campaigns, holding the position of all school board president, and working as an advocate for BIPOC heritage initiatives, as well as being the current Daily City Youth Poet Laureate first runner up from last year. So welcome up, Maxwell. Hi everyone, I have two poems for you today. The first one is called Bebop. Bebop. His fingers dance across the keys, but it's his soul that sings. Staccato, sharp, shooting shockwaves to your hearts, forcing your eyes closed, lips pursed into disgusting bliss. He'll stumble sometimes, strike ebony instead of ivory, splash red paint in place of the skies, Send sounds that break free from the bass, miss the beat of wild drums, and screech louder than saxophones. But then he'll stumble again, and again, and again, until his song takes flight, until missteps become part of his dance, until detours become part of his journey, until the road paved in ink before him is nothing but a suggestion. Thank you. This poem is called Revelations. Revelations. Sometimes it's best to forget, to close your eyes and open them for the first time again, and find that the sky isn't a sea, it's one with the ocean. And those eyes aren't deep blue, no, they're shallow diamonds. And that mirror isn't shattered, it's a mosaic. And the heart doesn't beat, no, it sings your song. And you aren't running west, you're racing the sunset. And chimneys don't smoke, they exhale in a cold world. And the trees aren't shedding, they're crying tears of orange. And time doesn't tick, it swings from side to side. And stars don't shoot, but they can still slip between your fingertips. And shadows aren't layers, they're shelters for the forgotten. And the edge of the path isn't the end. It's the start of a road not taken. Thank you. Thank you, Maxwell. So our last performing finalist is Madison Yu, age 16, from Westmore High School. Madison is on the service commission at her school, volunteers at the food bank, and is a student government officer. Hi, um, I'm gonna be performing my poem, Then Go, Impressionism and the Human Condition. Life, brush strokes like rays of sun kiss the eyes, sunflowers shades of yellow and nothing less of gratitude, youthful expression colored on almond blossom face and skin, perpetual happiness in the field with irises that were blue and a starry night swelled up in your eyes of wonder. Love, a garden with butterflies in your stomach at 8 p.m. near the cafe terrace at night. Your fingers cascade cascaded onto the table a small bottle with peonies and blue delphiniums reverberating with your beating heart, but the heart is still part of the body and the body is one of fragility. A skin bleeds with every minute tear and now your heart resembles that of the vase with red poppies drooping on the empty table next to you. Conflict, a self-portrait of self-destruction and that was what those manic streaks of navy and tawny, opposite colors and disharmony in painting told me. Today you painted the place you saw out of glass like your heart. 
It was the wheat field with the reaper, and I thought nothing of it because the reaper was smiling. The reaper was smiling in shades of yellow and nothing less. So perhaps there is life in the image of death. Death. The psychiatrist said you were recovering. Those hours of broken brush strokes that captured life itself. Moments of time that you'll never paint again now that you're gone. The psychiatrist said art is healing. So why didn't that hole in your heart heal after I tripped over gravel to find you? And that wheat filled with crows where the dirt path ended. Thank you, Madison. So let's have a big round of applause for all of our finalists. <laughs> it takes a lot of courage to come up here and perform in front of all of these people, and you're all fantastic. So next, I'd like to take a moment to introduce our 2022-23 Daily City Youth Poet Laureate, Chloe Chow. Chloe is a junior at Westmore High School, and after serving as the Daily City Youth Poet Laureate, says she has grown as a writer and a person. As part of her laureateship, Chloe started Cloudy Magazine, a youth-led literary magazine which fe features works from Daily City youth and youth around the world. Chloe has continued to receive accolades, winning the Poetry Out Loud co competition for San Mateo County, and most recently being named California Youth Poet Laureate. I've mentioned that a few times. <laughs> We're pretty stoked about it, so. <laughs> she will now perform one of the poems that she submitted for that competition, Ars Poetica with Baba's 85-inch TV. Hi. Okay, so before I read my poem, I'd just like to say a few words. Um, it's crazy that, like, just two years ago, I was sitting in this front row as a finalist, worried about where we'd like the outcome be of this competition. But I just want to say right now, whether you finish today as a finalist, as the runner up, or as next year's Daily City Youth Poet Laureate, there's so much potential in all of you. Like just hearing your poems right now, that's way more than I was writing at that age. And yeah, I'm just impressed by all of you. And thank you to Mara Grimes. I see you in the crowd. Um, my coach, Lisa Rosenberg, my mentor, Aileen Castaneto, um, Victoria McBelong, everyone at Daily City, um, also, my superintendent, Ms. Presta, in the crowd, and Mr. Warden, but I don't know where he went. And, oh, hi. And yeah, just thank you to everyone. I think the Daily City Youth Poet Laureate program is a huge support system, and just never stop writing. Okay, so I'll read my poem now. Okay, this poem is titled Ars Poetica with Baba's 85 inch TV and it's about tradition and culture. I am always afraid, but things are never the same. Can't deliver to my hometown, I ask my Baba about the taste of chicken knuckles. He looks at me scandalized, split face and rooted in an American taste, he says to me, Xingyi, how you learn a dish like that? I am all tongue twisted, my teeth rotting in my silvered mouth. I look away. He sighs, speaks again, Xingyi, English is not my first. I know this already. My teachers told me this in elementary school, the cartilage and my knees crackling for my American appetite, breakfast sausage and honeyed eggos for days. I tell him, sorry. Baba, he smiles at me slowly, face unlatching to a toothed voice box. I am writing this poem because I don't know what else to say. Every Chinese New Year, I am buried under the incense from the temple next to an Ikea. Every Chinese New Year, me and Baba fill up the offering table with jellies from 99 Ranch. We watched the Zodiac predictions on his 85-inch TV that was half off at Costco. Watch the reminders of matriarchy in our homes. Forget the syllable necklace around my throat is our bloodline. Half of its nerves can be used to play the guitar. The other half can be sold to buy four cycles at the washing machine. No, that just won't do. The Zodiac predictor says only numbers and multiples of eights are lucky, like 16, like 40, like 88, or in Chinese, Baba. I am ending this poem now 
because I have written 23 lines and I still know nothing more about my language. Because my brother and I were glass children. I had read his expressions once and found nothing there but a fear of drowning, his legs tangled in salty liquid, his rib cage expanding for oxygen. His body 60% water, but still unable to accept the atoms outside. How I prayed our Baba would teach us to swim one day. But all he told me was, there is nothing noble in water. How I prayed he would teach me the workings of our country, wrap me in the red flag of his northbound city. But he said to me, no, Xingyi, this color is only blood. How I prayed to tear his 85-inch TV apart, ripping the circuit boards from blue and green wire. Ask my Baba how something so desecrate could be a mosaic of my mechanical wanting, where the 85 is only half eight, half Ba, meaning only half lucky. How I prayed for salted egg yolks and smoked grasshoppers from home, only for Baba to say to me, Xingyi, stop. Stop what you're wanting. We are in the beautiful country now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chloe. And thank you so much for your words of encouragement for our other poets. So for our final performance of the evening, we welcome current Daily City Youth Poet Laureate, Olivia Veroy. Olivia is our youngest Daily City Youth Poet Laureate to date and has been an excellent representative for DCPLA and our Youth Poet Laureate program, reading at various community events, including the countywide celebration of the arts put on by the San Mateo County Office of Arts and Culture. For her service project, she created Rise Above the Sea, an online educational project designed to introduce fourth through eighth graders to the art of haiku. Welcome. Um, hi, everyone. Before I share my poem, I'd like to thank everyone for coming to this amazing event, and especially all the finalists for sharing their wonderful words. Um, I'd also like to thank the Daly City Public Library Associates and the Daly City Youth Poet Laureate Program and Ms. Bagbilang for getting me here today. Um, this previous, this last, this last year has been one of the best of my life, and I've really enjoyed sharing my words with everyone. Um, now I'll be sharing my poem, By the Ocean. By the ocean, beach. Cloudy skies and chilly wind gone ignored. Running to catch the bus in flip flops. Feet pounding against pavement and laughter echoing off street signs and parked cars. Towels laid on the ground running off to feel the cold California waves against your legs, trying to roast marshmallows without getting burned, but wanting to feel the warmth of the flames, wondering what would come next. Avenue, ocean floors of gum-stained concrete, boba shops and Chinese bakeries becoming a second skin, ramen and fast food burgers devoured as the world passes outside, Sport games and late night practice. The world still found a way to move on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Olivia. You can stay up, actually. So now it's time to announce our winners. But first, can I have all um, present Daily City Council members come up and all of our finalists? You can, um, you can stand right here. And uh, Mayor Manalo, we'd like to have you pass out the certificates to the finalists. So you can just bring them up here. I know you have some as well. <laughs> um, just stand here and su support. Um, do you want to read it? Do you want me to read oh, it? Okay. Yeah. Um, finalist Madison Yu. And then do you want to give her yours as well? Do you have <laughs> I know, sorry, we, we should have organized that ahead of time. 
So we have certificates from DCPLA and also from the city of Daly City for each of you. That's why we're scrambling a little bit. <laughs> A <laughs> uh, finalist, Elizabeth Wong. Um, finalist, Lauren Valencia. <laughs> finalist, Julian Ozaitea. Ozaita. <laughs> Finalist, Maxwell Espinola. <laughs> Finalist, Stephanie de Guzman. <laughs> Finalist, Kaylee Chu. All right, and now our current Youth Poet Laureate, Olivia, is going to do us the honor of announcing the first runner-up and the next Daily City Youth Poet Laureate. Um, yeah, stay up. Um, first runner-up, Julian Ozaita. And 2024-25 Daily City Youth Poet, Youth Poet Laureate, Maxwell Espinola. So thank you all. Don't be strangers. I will be emailing you with other poetry um, opportunities. You always have another chance to participate, but there's so many things that you can do. Um, I'd love for you to stay up and take some photos with the City Council and the DCPLA board, all of our board members that are here. And the rest of you are welcome to go grab some cake and coffee from the back there. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.